Hey, what's up everybody? It's Coach Matt Ellis, EliteThrowsCoaching.com. Thank you all so much for checking out the video today. In today's video, we are gonna be going through another one of my favorite glide shot uh, drills. These are drills that you can use either in the weight room or out at the track or at the throwing circles to teach your glide shot putters good technique and good form. And the most important thing is that you're gonna be able to teach them how to do this quickly while working with a big group. Now, all of these drills are drills that I use at my overnight throws camps. Click the card that just popped up in the corner if you're interested in attending our throws camp this summer. There's actually two of them happening this year. And these are things that I use at every single camp. It takes very little equipment. You can just sort of haphazardly pick whatever's lying around, whether it's uh, you know a chain link fence or whether it's a uh, you know, uh, a fence post or you're in the weight room and you're using a bar, you'll see what we're talking about in just a minute. But this solves a huge problem because a lot of times as coaches, we're dealing with big groups. We need to teach our athletes proper technique and we don't have a lot of time to do it. So these are some great drills that you can use with a big group with minimal equipment in a very fast amount of time to teach your throwers proper form and technique. All right, so check it out. One of the most common faults that happens with beginner and intermediate gliders is that when they get to the circle and they're gliding out of the back and they're first learning how to put all the pieces together, they have a really hard time of keeping separation. Now, what is separation? Well, essentially when we get into the power position, you have your feet facing one way. This is what I call nine o'clock, but you might call it 90 or 270. I look at it like a clock. We're looking at nine o'clock. And a lot of times our athletes will land here at nine o'clock, but we want separation. We want the feet at nine o'clock and we want the chest and torso pointed back towards 12 o'clock. So this creates that separation. That, this creates that built up kind of wound up tension and torque in our midsections. Well, what starts to happen is that when athletes learn to glide, they understand, hey, power position is here. Get to the back of the circle, all right, we're gonna glide and land in the power position. But a lot of times they land wide open. They land looking at and pointing at nine o'clock instead of 12. So it'll look like this. They'll start in the back, they'll do their glide just like this, and then they start to turn and look. All of their weight shifts, their eyes, their shoulders, their chest, everything faces this way. So what do we do as coaches? The first thing we typically do is we try some type of a kind of body cue. So we'll say, keep your left arm back. All right, well, a lot of times what happens then is it looks like this. They turn their entire body and they're just, their left arm is pointing this way. Their shoulders are turned, their chest is turned, their head is this way, but the arm is now back. And then you go, okay, keep your arm and your head back. And they get in the circle and look like this. Arm is back, head is back. The rest of their body still turns, but they're looking and pointing that way now, but the rest of their body is still facing nine o'clock. And you're like, all right, what else can I tell these guys? What else can I do to say, okay, keep your, keep your shoulders back, keep your chest back, keep your stomach back, point your belly button at something, look at something, point at something with your left arm. There are so many different ways that you can tell your athletes, hey, you're doing it wrong, do this instead. But sometimes it's just a lot easier to have them step outside the circle, have them grab onto something and do the drill that I'm gonna show you now. So here in the gym, we have a bunch of power racks and squat racks, but there's a lot of different ways that you can set this up. I can tell you at track camps, I have used chain link fence is probably the easiest way of doing it. Find an area around your throwing circle. Maybe it's your discus hammer cage. Maybe there's some type of fencing around the track. Get something that you can have your athletes grab onto with two hands. So maybe it is some type of a railing, like a handicap rail. Maybe it's a chain link fence. Maybe it's the top of a fence post. Maybe it's a power rack, a squat rack. Whatever you have, they can grab onto. This is the best way of teaching them what that separation feels like how to keep their upper body turned, how to keep their upper body back. Not just their arm, not just their head, but their entire upper body back. 
just grab something about waist height. As you can see, this is about hip height for me. It's about a little bit low actually, but it'll work out fine. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And this is what we call a hold back drill. Or if we're outside, we used to call it a fence drill because we would use a chain link fence near our throwing area every single day. Now, when I like to teach my athletes this, I like to include this when I teach them how to glide, but I also like to include this drill when you are correcting that issue of opening up too early, turning the head and the shoulders and everything too early before you get into that power position. Here's how it works. Very simple, just lower down the pins or lower down the J cups, put the bar in the rack about waist height or like kind of, uh, what is this, like your waist of your pants, whatever that is thing, I can't think of the name of it. High, boom, grab it with both hands, take a little step back. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna hang on to the bar or the fence or the railing or whatever you're using, and we're gonna do a little mini glide. So we're gonna turn our feet just like they would be in the power position, but the big thing here is that we're gonna let the bar or the fence post or the railing or whatever that's going to resist, that's gonna hold back our upper body. So it looks like this. So we're able to turn that right foot just like it would be in the power position. We're able to land on the ball of that left foot or the tip of that left foot just like it would be in the power position. And then we can reset and do it again. Boom, do it again, watch how quick. Boom. Repeat, do it again. Repeat, do it again. Repeat, do it again. So what's that? I did it five or six times in maybe 20 seconds. So this is a drill, a high volume drill. You can repeat over and over and over and over again to get that idea that, hey, the shoulders, the head, the chest, the sternum, the stomach, the belly button, Everything needs to stay back and you need to twist that lower body. Keep the upper body still, just move the lower body to get into that power position. So it's one of my all time favorites. You can do it pretty much anywhere you have flat ground and something to hold on to, but it's an awesome way to teach your athletes this position, but also correct your athletes if they are having that issue. All right, everybody, thank you all so much for checking out the video today. As always, if you liked the video and enjoyed it and it helped you out, click that like button down below. It really helps us out. Also, click that subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already. About 75% of our views come from people that are not subscribed to the channel. And these videos come out two or three videos a week that are gonna help out a lot of throwers and a lot of coaches out there. So please subscribe as well and leave a comment down below. Let me know any questions you have. Let me know if you want me to answer anything in a future video and I will get right on it. As always guys, check out the link in the corner. That is for our overnight camp that happens at Allegheny College. We're doing two camps this year. The first, July 6th through the 9th and the second, July 10th through the 13th. So make sure to go up there, click that card, check out the camp, and we will see you in July in Pennsylvania.